I'm doing this video tutorial, I guess, uh, as a bit of an experiment because some of you may know uh, that I've got a new baby at home, two months old, a boy, and a toddler. And so it's very busy throughout the day. I'm a retired teacher, so it's very busy throughout the day. And at nights, uh, my wife and I uh, are on a schedule. I do half the night, and she does the other half, and then we switch who is ever first and second and stuff. I haven't been able to do any Blender videos or do anything uh, for that matter. And I'm going to give it a try. He's sleeping in the bassinet, but I know he hears me, and I wanted him close. And we'll see how it goes. And so this video is for relative beginners, sort of like me. Very simple, but it uses, you know, some very good modeling techniques. And a lot of people have been asking me to keep making videos. And I want to, and I really appreciate that. And so I'm going to try. We'll see how, how long uh, this goes. Okay, so I'm going to make a simple desk lamp. And uh, I intended this to be some kind of like a, a radio or something that's uh, attached to it. So you could decide to do that or not. It's not high poly. It's not exactly low poly. Uh, it's somewhere between 30 and 70,000 polys because I want to use subdivision surfaces. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. You'll see. I happen to be over here in Blender 2.9. And this is the particular Blender theme I'm using. It's called Science Lab. It's just available up here file under that and user preferences. So it might look different than yours. I'm going to switch over to Cycles Render. Uh, I just prefer to use that. And I'm going to hit A and hit X and delete everything. So I've just got a, a blank scene here. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to get through the modeling, let alone any texturing. So I, I don't really intend to do that. I want to show you how I would model this. Okay, so I'm going to hit 7 and 5 to go to top ortho view. So I'm looking straight down. And I'm going to start with the baseline and go shift A, add mesh, circle. And I'm just going to go with, say, 24 vertices. I could probably even go with less than that. I'm zooming using my mouse wheel to scroll in. And, whoops, that's not what I want to do. Left mouse button. To, no, that wasn't that, was, that wasn't right. Shift C to put that there. Yeah, the mouse wheel. And it's been a while. Okay, so I'm going to make the base. So I'm going to hit Tab, and I happen to have this Pi menu here. You can probably just, you know, go in the, this way. Object mode, Edit mode, or hit Tab. Okay, so I've got it all selected. I happen to be in Vertex selection right here. Doesn't matter uh, which you are in. And I'm going to um, hit E to extrude, E, and left click to accept. And I'm going to drag the Z arrow here. I'm going to pull up a little ways. I'm going to make the base. Okay, so that's the height. I can adjust this later. And now I'm going to come in E, and I'm going to hit S and pull in just a little bit. I'm going to be adding a subdivision surface, and that's going to round this out. So I'm just coming in a little bit. Uh, that'll help me later, as you'll see. I'm going to hit E and S. Come in a good amount more, E and Alt M, and choose Merge at Center. And this is what I have so far. Now, it looks like some of my polys are dark and some are light. I think some of them are flipped, so I'm going to hit A to select it all, and I'm going to go Control N and deselect. And now you can see they're all that light gray. Okay. Now, uh, I am going to switch to Edge Selection. I don't have to, I could do this in vertex selection. And I'm going to hold shift and alt and I'm going to click that edge and it's going to go all the way around. And I'm going to bevel this edge, give it a little bit of rounding and then subdivision surface as well. Uh, with that selected, I'm going to hit control B and I'm going to pull away and I'm going to get that effect. I can roll my mouse wheel up maybe two. All right. And I'm not doing this to any specifics, no numbers. We're just doing it by eye. I'm going to deselect, go back into object mode and you can see what I've got. So it looks very faceted and not very round. So over here under the wrench icon, I'm going to click that, add modifier, subdivision surface, and I'm going to choose two and I'm going to hit smoothing and that should be good enough. And this is, this is my base. All right. Now, the next thing we want to create is this part right up here. 
All right, and to do that, I am thinking I may just use this piece, delete stuff, and then add to it. So let's try this instead of bringing in another circle, which might actually be easier, but I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate and click, and I've got a copy, there it is. I'm gonna go into edit mode and A to select it all and S to scale. And I'm gonna bring it down to a, the approximate size I might want it. I'm gonna hit seven to go to the top view and I'm gonna pull it towards the back. So let's say I want it roughly there. All right, I'm gonna hit three to look on from the side view and I'm gonna bring it down closer to the surface here. All right, now we need it a little bit taller, so I'm gonna shift alt and click that edge. I got it all the way around. I'm gonna pull it right down until it makes contact. So let's have a look at that. And there, I've got that piece. Now you're, you're gonna notice that my transform tool, my origin is way over here because it's the, registering the origin of the original object I used, and now I have that object there. So I'm gonna come over here to set origin and origin to the geometry. I can hit the period key to focus on that. All right, we want to make the neck part. So we've got sort of this piece here and we're gonna come up. And again, you just do it do it to however you want, edit mode. Now I got all this stuff and so I'm actually gonna delete that. I'm gonna go into face selection and by the way, I'm just going control tab or you can do it down there. I'm gonna control tab and choose face. I'm gonna hit C to go into paint so a paintbrush selection, <laughs> whatever. And I'm just gonna left click and I'm gonna drag over that escape to drop that tool and I've got all that selected. I'm gonna go control plus and it's gonna expand my selection. And I'm gonna come right out to maybe there. Let's try there, maybe a little further. I can, in fact, I'll go right to the edge so you see what I'm going to do. I'm gonna go X and uh, delete faces. So I'm back to just having this. I'm gonna shift alt and click. By the way, I went back into edge selection, shift alt and click that and I'll start this again. Let's uh, scale in S, we'll come up like that a little bit, hit E to extrude and pull up, and we'll come up like that, and then we'll go E and S, we'll come in a bit, come in like that, and then we'll make the tube coming up E to extrude and pull up, and we'll come up like this. Now you're gonna see all this stuff, and that's because when I copied this object, it inherited the subdivision surface. And so this, it's trying to smooth it. Here, I'll turn that off for a second. This is, okay, it's trying to smooth uh, from here all the way up to there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put some edge loops in here to uh, make it behave a little nicer. So the way you do that is you go Control R with your mouse hovering over the object, Control R left click and then pull with your mouse just pull it down till about there let's see what that's done i'll deselect and come out okay it's behaving a bit better but that looks kind of weird so i'm going to come in and i am going to select this edge and i'm going to bevel this Control b and i'm going to bevel it like that and i'm going to put just one segment and let's see what that has done that's made this a little bit nicer we're not there yet I'm gonna put an edge loop in here and pull it down and let's see how it's looking. All right, that's not bad. I think I need to do a bit of more work here though. All right, and I'm gonna come in here, control R, and I'm gonna pull in just like that. There we go. And that is what I am looking for. Okay, and I don't know if that, yeah, that is, that is, that is there. Okay, I think I want this a little bit taller. Shift Alt and click that edge and it's gonna pull it up. And out of this, I'm gonna get that sort of gooseneck type thing. So I'm gonna, I gotta close that in a little bit. I don't have to close it off completely. I'm just gonna go E and S and I'm gonna pull it in like that. But because I have subdivision surface, it's gonna round this and that doesn't look quite the way I want it. All right, so we're gonna put an edge loop Control R, and I'm gonna pull it up near the top. Not quite at the top, let's see what that does. That's better, but I need a little bit more. So I'm gonna put an edge loop right here. Now, I mean, I could, I could have not done that X dissolve edges. I could have just taken this and I would get two edge loops by beveling, Control B, pull like that, and then just put one there. Um, and that would have given me an edge loop there and on the inside. 
All right, but I want one more thing. All right, oops, let's go to edit mode. I want one more edge loop just for support. And I get this effect. All right, so, I mean, I'm just putting in edge loops where I think I, I'm going to need them. You might be saying, how would I know where to put them? Just, just experiment. All right, so now we're going to create this part here. And we're going to be using uh, curves for that and arrays. Um, but again, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take a piece of this. So I'm going to shift alt and click that edge right there because it's in the right position and essentially the right size. So I'm going to use this to build the gooseneck part. So you'll see what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to copy it or duplicate it. Shift D and left click. I'm going to break it away from this object and use it as a separate object. So I'm going to go P, separate by selection. Go back into object mode and now click on it and my transform tool is still registering the origin of the original object. I also have a subdivision surface on, which I'll deal with in a bit. So I'm going to go origin of geometry. Okay, so now I've got this and I can move that around and it's the right size. At least the right diameter. Okay, let's go into edit mode. Make sure it's selected, A to select, E to extrude. I'm going to pull up like this because this gooseneck thing is made of parts or pieces every wherever you see the sort of the round part there multiple pieces arrayed so i'm creating a segment that i'm going to array and i'll make it a little bit bigger and by the way um i get some discoloration in my polys here so i'm going to select it all and go control and watch the color okay see the way it flipped this is the piece I'm going to use. I can just push it right down and I'm going to array this piece. But first of all, I want it to look like a, a wire or a, a gooseneck. I keep calling it flexible tube. So I'm going to edit mode and go control R. That'll put an edge loop right in the middle. Click to accept and then control B to bevel. And I'm going to make an area like this, not too wide, but not too narrow, just you know, give it a try and see if you like like it. I'm going to hit E to extrude and S to scale. I'm going to pull it in a ways. Not too much, just like that. Now, because this has a subdivision surface, I'll get that effect and I'll hit smoothing. I want this a little sharper. So I'm going to go into edit mode. And I guess I could just take select each of these. So I'm holding it here. I'll do that again. Shift, Alt, and click and shift alt and click so I get those and let's bevel those control B pull back and roll your mouse and 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 roll your mouse wheel up one and let's see if that has that's given me what I want I want it smooth but I want it a little bit more defined okay cool and now what we'll do is I'll take this and I'll minimize the subdivision surface I'll have add modifier array but I want it in the Z direction I want a bunch of these piled on top so I'm going to come over here I'm going to put zero for the X direction. And by the way, if you're not sure about that, you see X, Y, and Z or Z, whatever. And I'm going to put one for the spacing. And then I'm going to increase the count like this. Now I'm going to end up needing a lot of these. All right. And this is going to start bringing up your poly count. And this is the problem with using a subdivision surface here. So it jumps up very fast. Let's try taking that off and you can see it's jumped way down. Let's try instead of that add modifier bevel and see how, f how high it goes up. If I put two, eh, maybe even just one. That may be good enough for what we need. So let's hide the bevel. Let's get rid of the subdivision surface and increase the array a bit. Okay, 27. Okay, we're gonna need more, but okay. Now with my um, transform tool on the first segment. See, because if I hide the array, it's really registering this first segment. With that segment selected, I'm going to bring the 3D cursor to that point by going Shift S, cursor to selected. That brings that red and white circle right there. That means the next object I bring in will show up right at that spot, which is what I want. I'm going to be bending this, all right? And I'm just wondering if this base is too, too big. Shift A, 
curve path, but I want it straight up. So I'm going to rotate Y90. I'm going to go into edit mode so I can see it better. And I'm going to pull it up like that. Okay, now I'm going to hit three to go into side view. And I'm going to select this top point and I'm just going to push it over. And then I'm going to select that point and I'm going to try to start getting the curve that I would want for the gooseneck. Let's try that and we'll see what it looks like. All right. With that there, I'm going to, did I hide? No, I just, okay. Let's come back to this piece, select that piece, turn on the array. And I have this so far. I know I'm going to need more. So I'm going to bring it up 38,000. Okay. All right. I'm probably going to need a lot more than that. So I'm just going to bring it up. Oh, it's already hitting 80. All right. Well, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I want to bend this according to this. Now this is a curve. This is a polygon. So under here, I'm going to choose add modifier curve and the curve. I'm going to choose that. Now it ends up over here. And so what you got to do is with the Z arrow, I'm going to pull it down. Now it's lagging a bit because I'm, I've got so many polys. I'm going to turn off the bevel and I'm going to bring this down and you can see that it starts to follow that. So, period key to zoom in a bit and make sure that it looks like it's coming out. It does. You know what? That looks fine to me just with smoothing and no bevel. And that brings down the polys a lot. So I'm going to delete the bevel and just carry on with that. I'm going to go back to the array and I'm going to up the count like this till it looks like that. And I'm going to bring it a bit more and I have that. Now, the cool part about this is I can always hide this, come back to my curve in edit mode, and I can, from an orthographic view, I can adjust this curve, unhide, and it will follow that curve. All right, so hmm. let's massage this a bit, hide that. Let's work on this a little bit more. Maybe I'll select both of these points and bring them down so it's not so extreme and bring that over a bit like that and go back, Alt H. And now I've got too many segments on this. So I'm going to start dragging them back. And then now you'll notice that my, th my transform tool is way down here. You can go set origin to 3D cursor and that'll bring it back to where it was. And then I can just pull this along. Maybe I like that. Maybe that's okay. So I'm not going to apply that. I'm just going to leave it like that. And now I'm going to build the lamp part. And you know what? I'm just going to take this shift S cursor to select it. That'll bring the 3D cursor right to the middle of this circle. Let's use a piece of this in edit mode. Choose an edge, shift alt and click that edge and say, well, there's a perfect circle right there. All right, shift D and P to break it out, making a new object back into edit mode or object mode, sorry. Select it, make sure origin and geometry is on. I'm just gonna move it out. I'm gonna make my lamp out of that. I'm gonna scale it a bit. All right, and you can do this in any order that you want. Maybe I'll scale it a bit up. Yeah, okay, I'll go back to there. All right, let's go into edit mode, select it. And I'm gonna hit, uh, I'll go from the side E. And I pull it out like this. Scale it in. E, and I'll come out a bit more like that. And maybe that's what I want, but maybe it's a bit big. So I'll do it like that. Okay, so far so good. And I think now at this point, uh, how do I want to do this? Um, I think I'll close off the back. Let's select that back edge and go E and S. Bring it in just a little bit. E and S, a bit more. Uh, e and S, I'll come in, but I want to make a, a region where this connects. So I'm going to come into there and then we're going to come out. I'm going to hit E and come out just a little bit. E and come out a bunch more. And then let's close this off. E and S, E and S, E and Alt M merge its center. 
All right, now we're gonna need to add more edge loops, but this is what we're starting to get. Not doesn't look too, too bad. Okay, and what I think I'll do for this is I am going to give it some thickness using solidify. So let's close that and just narrow this down a bit. Let's go add modifier, solidify. I like to bring this above the subdivision surface, so I'll just do that. And for the thickness, I'm gonna go 0.05. Let's try that. I think I'm gonna go a bit more, 0.07 maybe. I'm gonna hit apply. And then now this looks very rounded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go control R and I'm gonna pull an edge loop down close to the end. I'm gonna do that. And on these, and I'm gonna do one on the inside as well, up near the top. Let's have a look at what that's done. Okay, that's sharpened that up. We could probably do a bit more. Uh, and you may not like that much thickness, but I'm okay with it for this particular lamp. I'll put one edge loop there. Control R, taking an edge loop and dragging them. Okay, let's save that. So that looks like that. That's pretty good. And I don't mind that slope. I mean, if I put in an edge loop, say here, and I drag it down, it'll make that a lot sharper. Do I prefer that? Not necessarily. I'm kind of all right with that. And then what I thought I would do is just to, to finish that off is let's go in here and maybe I will put an edge loop here and drag it near the front to make the glass. E and S. Yeah, I may have, this may not work that as well as I wanted to. E and S, let's just try it. E and Alt M. If I do that and I put in an edge loop here to push it towards the end and one down here, I may not get what I want, but I might. That looks okay, I think. You know, it, let me, let me backtrack from that and just show you. It might be easier to just bring in a very simple circle. Uh, I'm gonna select an edge that just is central to this whole thing. So I can bring Shift S, cursor to select it. So I can bring the 3D cursor there. And then in object mode, shift A, mesh, circle. So it shows up right there. And I can just scale this in a little bit, sort of push it up and scale it in so it doesn't show through. I know you can't see it. Make sure I'm in edit mode and go E and S, come in, E and S. Don't worry about the colors right now, E and Alt M. Let's select it all and control in. Oh, it's not gonna let me flip the polys from that. So we're gonna extrude it down a bit, E, come down a little bit and make sure I got it and then I could just do it that way and then it's right in there that is a separate object for my the glass okay now I'm not going to join this but I, what I'll do is I'll select them both and then from the side I'm going to hit G for grab and bring it close and then I'm going to rotate our X oops and you can always hold shift Come on over here. G. R. X. A bit more. Kind of get it like that. G. Let's see if that's a little bit crazy. Okay, we're getting there. All right. G. R. X. I think it needs to be like that. All right, something along those lines. So this is what we have. Now, is that a little bit too crazy there? Um, I could, I could, um, I could just try going like this and seeing if I like it better doing that kind of thing. Hmm. You just mess with the position. It's not really facing downwards very much, it's just facing out. You know, you would mess around with that. Now, can I? 
make this bigger. Just can I just scale shift Z right now? Maybe I want to do that. Take this whole thing, and that's just gonna do that. So take. Uh, maybe I do want to do that. All right. Maybe what I'll do is I will go in a wireframe and select this and get rid of some of those segments. We don't need that many. Do that for the moment. And solid view. Maybe I'll hide that and have a look at this curve. I think I'm going to do something else here. I think I'm going to do this. I'm just manipulating this to see if I prefer it. Bring that back. Oops, I got both of them selected. Now I would need more segments probably. No, I could probably get away with that. And take the light again. On the lamp part. Yeah, I think I'll like it better. I hope so. Just lining up this part with this, I suppose I could be zooming in too, couldn't I? What if it was there? Yeah, that's all right. Now I feel as if this is not, and see, that's what you have to go back. I just feel like it's not as hefty as it should be. Is that better? And by the way, does it need to be back a little bit? Let's get rid of the grid floor, hit N under display, uncheck grid floor. What do you think? Okay, let's select it, shift S, cursor to select it, bring the cursor right there. And let's make a very basic switch. Shift A, mesh plane, pull it up a little bit, period key to zoom in. Let's hit S to scale get the approximate size of the switch and want it down there let's make it nice and big all right let's pull this longer scale in the x just a little bit narrower okay let's go with something like that okay i'm gonna bring it down so it's pretty much on the surface let's give it some thickness e to extrude pull it up so we have it there now what we'll do is i'll take the whole thing i'll lift it up and i'll delete the bottom face Select the face, X, faces, we'll get rid of that, select it, bring it back down. Okay, let's make a little indentation where the switch part would go. So let's hit I to inset, I, and pull your mouse in, like about that, E to extrude, and let's push this down. So there's a space in there. Now, I don't really want to do a subdivision surface on this, so I think I'm just going to stick to beveling. So if I just First of all, put on the bevel modifier and the segments to two, maybe even three, and smoothing. Let's just see how that looks. That could look okay. Okay, so let's do this. Let's select this face, Shift D and P to make it a new object. I don't know if it needed to. Set origin to geometry and pull it out. Now it's got the modifier on it, but that's okay. Let's go with that. Let's go into edit mode. And let's hit E to extrude and let's pull down. And we're going to get a bit of a weird effect there. We're going to go Control uh, N to flip the polys. And let's actually hide the bevel so we have that. We have smoothing on so it looks a little bit funny. Uh, what I'm going to do with this though is I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to pull it up. And I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to push it down. And that's all we're going to do. We're not going to do much more than that. Actually, what we will do is we'll delete the bottom face. X faces, and that may have changed some of the smoothing right there. I'm going to push it down as if it's a switch there. Let's go back out and put on the bevel, and we need to do a bit of work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this outer edge, shift alt, and click that edge all the way around, all the parts of that edge, and I'm going to go control B and bevel, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to try and putting on one. Now that may have disrupted the bevel may not like that let's take off smoothing as well yeah, it didn't like that 
It didn't like it. Let's try smoothing again, and let's not uh, do that. And the way I can, let's try selecting all these edges here. Sorry about that, and the dissolve edges. And yeah, doesn't like it at all. Let's get rid of the bevel. Well, we could um, we could put a subdivision surface on this, and it'll do that. And all we have to do is go control our pull up towards there, control our pull down towards there, and we could put another edge there, and another one down there, and uh, that's still too rounded. So what we need to do is uh, come up here a bit more, and that's probably all right. I mean, you know, you can mess with it. you put more edges. Well, maybe I'll do this. Oh, did I not? I do need to pull one down there. Yeah, well, in the end. Okay. Do I have them on the sides? Maybe that's oh, not there. I can just do two and then go scale in the X to pull them out. And that's a lot of, of geometry for that thing. It's for that silly thing. But that's one way you can make a uh, make a switch. Okay. And then uh, there we go. There's our, our basic lamp. And if you wanted to just put uh, general uh, viewport colors on it, uh, before, and, you know, instead of rendering whatever, we could come over, just make it look a bit better. Click the materials, click new. And I'm going to go for a black. And, oops, and down here under settings, choose viewpoint color and the eyedropper, choose the black. And there's the switch coming in black, select this piece. And over here, go for that black. And there is a little bit of a shine to it. And I want this to be that black as well. Okay, but this stuff I'll have as a different color. Just wondering if this is tall enough. I, personally, I think in reality, it needs to come up more and what I would do is I would select that edge, shift, alt, and click, and then go control plus until I get to the outside, or at least, yeah, probably to there. And I could just pull it up. I know I've got extra geometry under there, but I think it needs to be supported like that. That's really how I, th I believe it should be. I think it looks better like that. And then what I would do is click new, and I'll go for a, like a, I don't know, kind of a gold and viewpoint port color and go for that and that would be that color as well and so with this okay and then this I'll just do new and I'll do sort of a bluish color let's say like that a purplish whatever and all for that you know and uh there's your desk lamp. I'm not sure I'm crazy about this this curve, so you could you could always hide that and go back in here and just, you know um, you could tweak this until you like what you have. You can also select two points of W subdivide and put another point in there, and then you know you might get more of what you want. Uh, Alt H, you know, then I have to adjust some things well let's let's go back to this let's see if I do that just as, just to show you as a quick change and then I'll select this piece and this piece and just hit G and I could probably just plug it right back on you know and is that is that better <laughs> I don't know all right so um, yeah that switch took too many polys I think but that's basically that's basically it so i hope you uh found that helpful or at least interesting thanks for watching